Captain Phillips was created during the pinnacle of pirate attacks and hijackings. It portrays the true story of Captain Richard Phillips and his crew. Captain Phillips sets off on the Merska, Alabama, a cargo ship carrying commercial cargo, food aid, fresh water, and fuel bunker, around the Great Horn of Africa, the most risky waters when dealing with pirates. As he is traveling, a band of pirates, led by Muse, board the ship and take control of the bridge, demanding money. Under their threats, Captain Phillips leads them on a tour of the ship to help them find his crew. Muse is then captured by the Alabama crew and a deal is made. Captain Phillips for Muse. However, as Phillips is teaching the pirates how to use the lifeboat to exit the ship, they kidnap him and escape with him as a hostage. They begin making their way back to Somalia when the Navy gets word and finds a lifeboat. The Navy tries many tactics to free Phillips, none of which work. Eventually, Muse is convoked to go onto the Navy ship and negotiate, and three Navy SEALs snipe the three pirates left, and Captain Phillips is freed with only minor injuries. We chose to focus on the historical elements and compare how realistically the movie portrayed what would actually happen in this situation. We looked at aspects of anti-piracy measures that have been taken and factual information on the pirates and the groups that they were involved with during this event. Two skiffs approaching at a distance of 1.5 miles with a possible mothership following potential piracy situation. Coffee, Alabama, you should alert your crew, get your fire hoses ready, and follow lockdown procedures. Uh, yeah. Is that it? Right. I'm relaying your transmission now, but chances are it's just fishable. They're not here to fish. It's text. This money. Taking you. That's all it is. You come to Arwatis, you got to pay. We were in international waters. Not your waters, international waters. We were carrying food. We are starving people in Africa. Even Somalis. Yeah, sure. Which countries like to help Somalis? Big ships come to our water. Take all the fish out. What's left for us to fish? So you're a, you're a fisherman? Yeah, we only fish International boats polluted waters and took away local fishermen's ability to make money. The fishermen formed armed groups to stop ships, which eventually led to hijacking. These groups hijacked ships and held them for ransom as a new way to make money. In 2009, 70% of coastal communities supported piracy as a way to defend waters and make money. Pirates also believed that they were protecting their fishing grounds and bringing justice for the resources the international ships took away, motives being to protect their waters but evolved into a source of income. Names such as International Volunteer Coast Guard show this. Most pirates were young and from the South Somalian area that was more violent and very unstable. How old are you anyway? What are you? 16? 17? Uh. Uh. You're too young to be out here doing this. There was always the pressure to prove yourself. No matter what, you were never good enough, and the idea that you could be considered better by those you respected led you to take actions we would consider extremely brutal. We have any idea who these guys are? The mothership is a Taiwanese fishing trawler that was hijacked last year. According to ONI's database, that vessel is under the control of Somali warlord Garad. This is indeed Garad's guys. They're looking for a payday, which means they'll talk, and if we can get them talking, wear them down. Frank, you need to know that this thing is running big here and there's a lot of pressure building. But whatever happens, Captain Phillips does not reach Somalia. Do your best to talk him down, Frank, but you're on the clock. We're deploying a SEAL team with USS Boxer and USS Halliburton to support. If you haven't gotten Phillips back by the time they arrive, the SEALs will take care of it. <laughs> It was supposed to be easy. I take ship, ransom, nobody get hurt. You had $30,000 on way to Somalia. It wasn't enough. I got bosses. They got bulls. 
we all got bosses. It's got to be something other than being a fisherman and kidnapping people. Maybe in America. Civil war in Somalia led to the collapse of their central government, and that left waters vulnerable, which led to illegal fishing. Dumping of waste began to take away fishermen's source of income, so they band together to stop it, under the territories that had become formed during the Civil War, under rebel and war leaders, who eventually became the warlords and bosses of these bands of pirates. Captain, no one get hurt. You don't play no game. Face looks scared, but everything's gonna be okay. I'm not gonna hurt you. Hostages usually have to wait around 45 days before a ransom is paid. Harming the hijacked crew goes against pirate codes and there have been few pirate-related deaths. This also demonstrates the strictly business part of the pirate's job. They need this to survive, and to them it's not a game, but their whole life. They got half the U.S. Navy out there. You've got to give up. you got to stop. I can't stop, Iris. The Navy is not going to let you win. It's over. I come too far, Iris. I can't give up. No. There are three types of pirates, and usually a variety of all three on each raid. The first is local fishermen, valued for their skill on the sea and boats. The second is ex-military, used to work for warlords and provide guns and fighting experience. The third is technology people, those who know how to operate devices such as sonar and GPS. We also looked into how accurate the actual storyline of the movie was based off of the boat and navy policies the MERSC Alabama would have followed. The crew had done safety drills the day before and had all been through anti-piracy training that included using small arms, anti-terror, basic safety, first aid, and other security measures. During the attacks of Somalian pirates, when Captain Phillips was taken hostage, the United States Navy guided missile destroyer USS Bainbridge and the guided missile freewright USS Haley Burton, with two helicopters on board, were sent to the Gulf of Aden. The original ship, the Mesurg, Alabama, was then taken, with help of the military, to its original destination. This movie was quite accurate in the information it gave about the events that took place involving Captain Phillips. It showed the amount of cruelty that some people practice in their everyday life, that to them it becomes a norm. And without the violence, there is no other way to live. These pirates were obviously not innocent, but it was because of the life they were forced to live that they did what they thought they had to do. Look at me, sure. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. 